Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a long time, it's been a couple of months since my last video and in the last three months I've opened up a restaurant with my friend and yeah, it's taken up all my time, all my money, all my energy as you can imagine. We've been training for like the last four weeks. Now the end of the, end of the fourth week was last night. Busy night. Everything's starting to run a bit smoothly now. It's been, yeah, it's been pretty intense. You know, so, and I've had no money really to spend on video games or any video game equipment, but I've got a little bit. My wife's been sort of giving me sort of pocket money. I sold a few little things on eBay just to sort of buy a few odds and ends. And we're going to go through that today. Just a few of the things I picked up over the last, say, two months. In that time, it's been Christmas, my birthday. I had my 50th birthday like last week. So I've got a few things from that. And yeah, we're going to, and I'm going to go into a little bit of the history of me collecting and also some of my rooms. Now, the channel's a bit over a year old, and I did want to do a little bit of a, a, a year milestone, not necessarily in the, in, the, in the sort of doing a room tour, but sort of had time to think about it. And I don't really have game rooms. Like, my, my rooms are full up with different things. Like, I love collecting comic books, horror magazines, pulp magazines, you know, art, you know, artwork, um, tech, video games, obviously, controllers, there's just, you know, lots of different things. We're going to go through a little bit of a walk around tour of the house today. And you'll just sort of see how it's sort of set up and yeah, how fortunate I am and how fortunate we are to have the sort of the collections and the things that we do. Because, you know, when I think back to when I was young, I think we first, I had a 2600, Atari 2600 when we were probably about eight years old back in the early 80s. And I think we upgraded to the Commodore 64. My dad was always into in a tech so we got the Commodore 64 and one of the sort of earliest memories of, is playing impossible mission on the Commodore 64 my dad's friend will come over me and my brother and my dad when we we ended up beating and finishing impossible mission it was just in yeah i was it's such a distinct memory you know you know another visitor stay a while stay forever it was just good you know interacting with the terminals and the robots it was yeah it, that's where it sort of started for me and you know since then you know, I used to, after that, my sister was born, or around about that time, possibly, probably, we moved the Commodore sixty four out into the into the, the front room. We used to call it in English, used to call it the front room, and I had it there. And I used to put my calculator next to the Commodore sixty four, and I just thought I was just it was the best. It was the I thought you know this is in I can't this is it. This is the start for me. You know, in the back of my mind, you know, moving forward, this is where I love gaming. I love tech. And I had a Casio sort of a calculator watch as well around about that time, a bit after that. And yeah, we used to collect, me and my brother used to collect game watches. More him. I had like Donkey Kong Jr. He had a few of the other ones like Parachute, Fire, Donkey Kong 1 and 2, the dual screen. So yeah, and then, and then from there on in, we moved, turned about 15, 16. I got the Amiga 500 and I've still got the Amiga 500 in the next room over there. My dad's fixing my original Philips monitor. So hopefully the next time I see him, we'll get the Amiga going because it's been about seven years since I've had that running and I've got loads of games. I'd really love to get it up and just sort of, yeah, really relive some of those games, some of those sort of, you know, the sounds, the graphics of the old Mega 500. So, yeah, so today we're going to go through a few rooms, a few pickups, and we are going to just sort of see how lucky we are to have these collections. And, yeah, we'll go from there. So... Stick around, we'll walk around. Here's a few collection pieces right now. All right, these are a few of the games that I got over the last couple of months. So yeah, that includes my sort of birthday and Christmas. It's Sunday now, so it's always good to have a you know a breakfast beer. Okay, these are some of the games. I got this for more for me, me and my wife to play, Monopoly Madness. It's not really your average Monopoly game though. You sort of, yeah, you sort of, use utilities like water um, I forget what they water like yeah energy and all that kind of stuff to sort of take over properties and she wasn't really keen to sort of playing that so it was a bit of a waste of money 20 bucks but I sort of played a little bit of it it's not too bad I could I consider playing that more at the same time I saw this other game from this is from EB games torment tide of tides of movement yeah I'm not sure about that one it was like really cheap like nine dollars Experience a deep science fantasy epic spanning countless lifetimes. So I haven't had time to play this one yet, but it, 
for the price that it was, I was like, you know what, I'll just big it up. I was just, you know, just keen to buy stuff on that day. And that same day, I bought this Switch game, Rayman Legends. I didn't even realise it was a download only code. I was like, oh, that's a bargain, like 15 bucks. And then I got home, I'm just like, what, there's no disc, no cartridge, sorry. But anyway, for me, it's the definitive edition of Rayman Legends. So I've already put that on. It's, yeah, you can't go wrong with the Rayman's game. It looks awesome on the Switch too. So that was that one. And this game, I was just absolutely right. This one was half price at the time. So this is Operation Wolf first mission. So when I was young, Operation Wolf and Operation Thunderbolt on the Amiga 500 were just incredible. And this one was like VR as well. I haven't played it on the VR yet, but this was half price. I paid $30 Australian for that, which is like 15 pounds, um, you know, yeah, like $20 US. So to, and I played it without the sort of, without the, 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 the visor on and it, yeah, it's a good sort of, you know, as you, you, you go along, shoot, 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 and then it moves along to the next part, you shoot, shoot, shoot. So, yeah, I was really happy to get that and so it brings back a blast from the past. We used to play Operation Wolf and Operation Thunderbolt a lot. So really happy with that one. So that were the four games I got from EB. And I went back to EB the other day. I thought it was my sort of just before my birthday. Went to EB Games and all the games were, were so expensive. There's no $2 games, no $5 games, no $7, $12, $15. $15. They're all like $28, $30. And I was just like, what? Have they just removed all the cheap games and just put all the sort of really expensive games there? So unfortunately, I just walked out with nothing. I was pretty disappointed. So, And my brother got me this for Christmas. I sort of, I was really sort of stoked because we don't usually try not to buy people each other put presents for Christmas to save money but I got flashback two on the PS5 and this one's the sort of the steelbook edition and you know yeah the disc is in the PS5 at the moment I gave it a run the other day but it's just yeah I'm just absolutely thrilled to get that it was such a surprise because I, I sort of remembered it was coming out in December then, but then forgot about it so yeah, that's Flashback 2, amazing. I've still got, I haven't really played Flashback 1. I've got the Another World sort of set up there. You can sort of, I don't know, you can't see it's beyond, above there. And then he also gave me this Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I think he bought a, um, a bundle on, off Facebook Marketplace and, and there was a double, so he gave me that one. So that's great as well. And for my birthday, he got, got me this. This is not just him, this is his family, Jake, Kate and Micah. So I was looking, funny enough, the day I went to EB and the, and the games were all so expensive, I'm looking at Prince of Persia going, oh, there's a new Prince of Persia, that's awesome. So I've got this, it's still in the wrapper, I haven't had time to, to crack it open yet, So, but really happy to get that. So there's a couple, well, not a couple, but it's already there's a, a stack of PS5 games, which I'm going to look forward to get. And then and then I got this, I got this, I pre-ordered this from Play Asia a few months ago, Borders Gate 3. You know, I know it's a digital only release. I think they might actually be bringing a physical copy out sometime this year, but I really wanted a physical copy. It does sort of say that it's Japanese and you do get some Japanese sort of, you get a Japanese like instruction manual or player's guide or something, but the game is fully in English, which is what I was really happy about because I was a bit worried it was going to be sort of Japanese subtitles or something. But yeah, I really wanted a, a physical copy of Borders Gate 3 and I've got Borders Gate 1 and 2 on the PS4, so... You know, all you need now is the time to play some Borders Gate 3, you know what I mean? I don't know when that's going to happen. But anyway, and this other game that I got, which you'll, you'll laugh, it's quite funny. I got this game called Waifu Undiscovered. I'm not, Waifu, I'm not sure how you, how you sort of pronounce it, but it's more of an adult sort of style game. It comes in a little cardboard sleeve. So it's basically a shoot 'em up where you sort of, what does it say on the back? In, in this simple yet rewarding shoot 'em up, take command of multiple ship types each balance for a different play style and blast away clothing that's been deeply infected by a deadly virus. So you pretty much just finish the levels to unclothe these sort of women, I guess you could sort of say. It's pretty cool. I might put some gameplay on him here and there. I've got it on out at, at, at the back in the next room at the moment, but it comes with a big stack of cards as well. So as you can imagine, these are the sort of the cards that you get. And it's on the other side, you can imagine that it's a sort of the different variation of what's there. So yeah, use your imagination on that. So that's a couple of the things that I've got. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to turn the camera around and then we're going to take a pretty much a, a few a room tours. 
Um, I've got a few pickups upstairs, a few extra things in the next room like toys, magazines, and that's just my gaming pickup. So yeah, thanks. Hang on, we've got lots to show you and the collection's just gonna, you know, you'll be really interested and hopefully it gives you inspiration for your, collect, for your collection you're collecting as well. And we're gonna film in the room that I was just in and we're gonna start here on the left. Now I've got my old Sony Bravia. Now hooked up to that TV, I've got my original Xbox down here. I've got an NTSC Xbox 360, my Amiga 500 Mini, and my GameCube. Now, along with that, I've also got, which is one of my favorite things, is my Pandora box. This has got like 500, 5,000 games on it. And for $200, it's absolute must-have in anyone's collection who loves arcade games. And also next to it, I've got my Rock Band drum kit there, and also my steering wheel set up for Gran Turismo 5 on the PS5. So another thing which is just absolutely unbelievable is that you can play Gran Turismo with such realism in the VR2 and the experience is just, yeah, it just blows me away. When, you, when you're racing and you look up to your left, look to your right, get spun around, it really does sort of, you know, do your head in. But yeah, right here you can see the shooters are on and what I'll do is just watch this and just, I'll let them go through the demos and I'll be like, I might play, you know, Samurai Races or Turbo Force and I've never even heard some of these titles. So, yeah, it's really cool. And next to that, I've got my two arcade machines. Street Fighter 2 would have to be one of my favourite games of all time. Even though I was never really good at it, I used to always get schooled by the players playing Ken or Ryu. Yeah, I just, I'm so happy to have it. I can just play whenever I want, turn it off whenever I want. And not only that, it's a street. Uh, this is the RK One Up Legacy Edition, but it's got like games like Ghosts and Goblins, uh, Dark Stalkers, Final Fight, Strider, 1944, Commando. So it's got a lot of other really awesome games. And then next to it, I've got my Neo Geo MVSX, which has just got 50 games, Metal Slug, All Your King of Fighters, Samurai Show Showdown, and I'm really happy to have that. Those two as part of my, you know sort of game room, arcade sort of style sort of setup. And over here I've got all my black t-shirts, got a few of those, and I just collect a few boxes on top there. It's just, it's, all this is just more for fun than anything, all my hats. I've got more boxes up here from some of my um, little mini arcade machines. As you can see, like there's a Zelda collector's edition, but this is where I have a few games sort of set up. I love to collect books, comic stuff, even old, you know, old sort of pulp magazines. This one's from like 19, I think 1940 something. If I can get it, if that will zoom in. I can't, I've got this bloody control in my hand. So yeah, just a few little books that I like there. I've got my DS collection down here. This I've got a couple of t uh, two DSs and my DS. My Game Boy Color setups down here. There's still need a little bit of work on these ones. And just, like I said, just, just little things I like to collect. The tiny pole position there, the one of the smallest arcade machines in the world. Tony gave me that Street Fighter control, which I love, and you can see at the back there. I also love to collect training cards. I love to get more into that actually still. Get them, get some graded, get some, show a few more, because you can't really see them in these binders. My friend's PS2 that they gave me. There's a few of my Switch games. I don't have too many. It's just a few odds and ends, my PS5 games. Got these little My Arcade set up here. It's just sort of where it sort of started my modern collecting. These are all the Xbox 360 games which I want to play, but I haven't had too much time to play games at all. And again, we'll just quickly go through this. Some original Xbox games, all my PS4 games there. And this is all my artwork, old machine here. And I also do love to collect old pulp magazines. So you can sort of see this one here. This one's Complete Cowboy. So I love to buy. They, they just smell amazing like an old bookshop. And I try to give them a bit of a grade. So you can see this one here is June 1942, volume three, number six. Now this one I've graded a four, which is a pretty good grade for something from 1942. You probably, I'm not an expert grader of pulp magazines by any, any stretch of the imagination, but the color looks good. You know, it's very important that the spine, the spine displays well. And as you can see, it's, it displays all right. So, you know, it, it's not a, a definitive grade but and I love getting you can sort of also see that there's some 
some sort of science fiction sort of style stuff here with Fantastic Adventures. Now this one I've just left it in the bag. But this comes from my comic shop and that's graded to four as well. So you can sort of see there. Yep. So I've got a bunch of pulps there, a bunch out in the back shed, like a lot of sports stuff. And then as we move back quickly, I've got my Game Boy sort of set up there. And that's that. And my sister gave me these for Christmas, which is awesome. All right. So what we're going to do now is go into the room next door and just do a little bit of a drive by. So that's that room here. Now I've got my sort of, I've got a few, got some statues set up. This is where I got all my gamer watches. We'll just quickly go through those. I've done those recently. There's a couple of 3DSs down the bottom. Now on to my right here is where I play my PS3. PS4 and my PS5 and my Switch. So as you can see, I've got Waifu under cover at the moment. So you can sort of give you an idea of what you're doing. This is a little bit of a demo there. Yeah, so there's the PS5 over there, the PS3 is there and the PS4 is down there with the, with the VR for the PS4 and the Switch is over there in the corner. So you can sort of see it's a bit of a crazy shoot 'em up with some real weird, crazy bosses as well. So it's a pretty good game. If you're interested in that sort of style, adult stuff with, um, with some shoot 'em up elements, then definitely go for it. And the Christmas tree is still up because I love lights. And over here, I've done a little bit more of this before, but there's some of my Warhammer painted figures. I've got my, one of my favorite artists, my Milo Manara there, and some Joe Linsner, and also some Warcraft stuff. As we go into the next room, which is adjacent to the room I was just in, this is sort of my computer room. So I'm, I won't turn the light on, I'll just leave it the way it is. So, this is pretty much my art room. I've got a lot of comic book art, video game art. EverQuest was probably one of the best games I ever played, not just because it was just a fantastic game, but just the immersiveness of it. You know, making friends that I still talk to even just to a couple of weeks ago from that game. And just it was just an amazing world. It's such an adventure. And I got that off the Keith Parkinson website. It's a beautiful, beautiful picture that I've got framed. And as you can see, there's a Wolverine, Ken Kelly, another amazing artist there with a Conan the Protector. I absolutely love that picture. I was so fortunate to find it. And as we go down, there's a Catwoman, Wolverine. We've got Joe Linsner Vampirilla here. We've got some Natalie Sanders. This was just some random thing I picked off, of, off her website, but I think it looks amazing in that, in that frame. One thing I do love is getting pictures framed and choosing the mats, choosing the frames. It looks, it looks awesome. This is my Star Wars wall. That was the first one I ever did. Now, I bought the frame cheap and I'm like, this is not working. So from then on, everything I've got framed here is done professionally. Now, this one I got off my sister just a couple of days. She bought me this for my 50th birthday. So thank you, Helen. I got on the wall. It took over the Princess Leia part. These are the originals from 1999, 2000 when the Phantom Menace come out. I just always carried them around so I still keep them up there. I'm going to put Princess Leia up there, and she's down there at the moment. So that's going to go. that was the first one I ever got framed. As we go across the wall, that's Iron Versio from Battlefront 2, one of my other really games that I got into over the last few years. So that's Iron Versio, if you're familiar with Battlefront 2. A beautiful Stormtrooper picture I got framed. I just love that one. It was good collaboration with the, with the, with the framers that I work with. And we'll go on to a few pickups here. Now, I've got a few new action figures for the war. I've got this um, Hera, Syndulla. Now, if you've watched um, the new Ahsoka series or Rebels TV series, you'll remember Hera. I think she looks awesome in that. So I've got that one. This was Lando. I got this off the Battlefront 2 from the game, which is there. Although it was one of his sort of best costumes in the game. It was like $9 off Amazon, so I picked it up. And I got this Mandalorian. This was basically Ahsoka when she first got introduced to the Mandalorian. See the glare from the shirt, from the blinds. It's daytime. And I basically right-clicked on that on Facebook, saved it, sent it to my framer, and yeah, he... Can I turn this light off? It would make it better. We'll see what happens. That's off. Yep. And yeah, so I got that. There's a couple of old... That one I had for like 20 years. I just always carried it around with me. And then these are the new ones as well. So I've got the Star Wars Rebels Thrawn figure up there. I love Thrawn. I really do. So I've got that one. I also got this Transformers RC off... Amazon. Unfortunately, it was on special. Maybe that's why, because it was damaged. And I'm just like, you know what? I couldn't even be bothered sending it back. And I got this. I've been wanting this figure for so long. This is the Reaction Devastator figure. 
So I'm absolutely stoked to have that one. It looks so good. And then on this wall, I've got some other Transformers pictures and also some other reaction there. I've got the Shockwave, the Transformers, Tiger Electronics, a couple of re, uh, G1 reissues. Oh, sorry, one there. That's the, I think it's Frenzy, is it? Yeah, Frenzy and Laser Beak. And then there's a Warpath there, along with a couple of other odds and ends. These are my Lens No Cry for Dawn pictures that I've got up there as well. I can move back a bit. There's a few po couple of pulps, nice bedtime stories, you know, Adult sort of stuff, breezy. Enet Enet bowls are amazing and amazing stories on the right hand on the left hand side there. And I've got a few PCs. I love collecting PCs. So I've got my sister gave me this iMac. I got my this one runs Windows XP. That one runs Windows ninety eight. And I've got my Windows ten and my Windows seven machine here. And I've got my old monitor down there, which on my dad's building me a little PC at the moment, Windows ninety eight PC. And I want to get a full IBM setup, so that's the monitor for that. And down underneath here are some of my comic books. I like to sort of, you know, fool around and just add little bits of art on them. I've got the Harley Quinn boxes, Generations. Yeah, so there, there's a Transformers one there as well with a few books. Yeah, these are some of my more adult sort of style comic books that I love to sort of collect, you know, just because of just more so the art and that. That's that. Got my comic book press there. And yeah, that's my little corner here as well, just with my little Deadpool corner. Love Deadpool, I love the movie, as you can see, I've got it there. My Vampirilla number one, one of my favorite books in my whole my whole collection, and 7.0. And I've got a few little uh, collector cades, counter cades, Miss Pac-Man, NBA Jam. There's a few other things as well, a little Street Fighter car there with Chun-Li, RX-7, Ghosts and Goblins, Yoda. And yeah, more comic books, I've got it, there's my few PC games behind there. There's a couple more art down there. Marvel Mystery Comics down the bottom. Alex Schomburg. And I think there's an Andy Kubert Wolverine. These are um, cover recreations or art recreations by an artist I've, I've sort of met. As we swing around to the right, we've got this amazing Warhammer picture up there of Horus and the Emperor at the, at the feet of uh, the Blood Angels um, Primark there, which is one of my favorite pieces of all time in terms of Warhammer 40,000, so I love that. Got Thor, uh, Hulk Ragnarok from Thor, and we've got Daredevil and Black Widow from Addy Granoff. Got a sign, J. Scott Campbell, it's Black Cat, sorry about the rip, you can't really see that, that too much. And if we move around to the right, we've got The Dark Knight, amazing movie, some Deadpool at the top, just sort of, this is some of the really early stuff that I got done, Walking Dead, love The Walking Dead, and some of these little old, I used to collect micro machines when I was young, so, Got some old micro machines, Ghost Rider figure. In the corner, I've got a few little bits and pieces as well, catalogs. My Dragon's Lair, little uh, arcade machine there. And we've got a few more, Polybius, Pac-Man, Galaxian, Bubble Bobble. Some more art up here. As you can see, Spider-Man, Delotto, Psylocke Recreation, Electra, Spider-Gwen. In the corner here, most of my PC stuff. Uh, Warhammer and some Amiga, Cadaver, Badlands, Legend Suit Larry's Amiga, uh, sorry, PC, all my uh, World of Warcraft stuff. I was heavily into Warcraft, World of Warcraft for a long time. I just love Warcraft. I've still got my original Warcraft um, game there, but not the, not the disc. More comics, a lot of Star Wars stuff under there, DC stuff. Um, yeah, you can sort of see it. Yeah, there, there, you can sort of see that. So that's that. Right, as we head up this side of the wall here, you can sort of see and we sort of circle around with a little bit of LEDs. All right, so this is my other room. This was the original room, so I'm really happy with it. We've got some, still trying to stick art wherever I can, just to sort of basically cover up the whole room. All right, we're gonna- Another video from upstairs with some pickups from the Wii and other sort of things, but I left the microphone downstairs so there was no sound. Anyway, I think this video is long enough, about 25 odd minutes, so it's a good sort of, good way to sort of launch up a new sort of you know a new sort of chapter in my videos and sort of my collecting so i'm happy with that so what we can do is i've got a, got a couple of other new things in between so some more video games some horror magazines a nice golden age comic so we can sort of show them off next time but until then like the video subscribe to the channel and i appreciate it and we'll see you in the next one see ya